Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Another very, very interesting weekend of URC Rugby. Bulls and Lions remain undefeated um, whilst the Stormers and the Sharks well, were very, very poor this weekend. And very interesting to try and dissect where things are going wrong at uh, both those two sides and why, for example, two South Africa teams have gone off pretty well whilst two South Africa teams are currently struggling. Now, for the Bulls and the Lions, it is the first game of the overseas tours and the nature of how close those games show you exactly how difficult it is to travel and uh, even playing against teams which I think they would traditionally expect to beat uh, quite substantially wasn't quite as smooth sailing. The Lions in particular um, having to really work hard right towards the end to try and get over the line against the Dragons, a side that they, you know, if they're playing in South Africa, they expect to beat pretty uh, easily. Um, we talk a little about the Sharks and the fact that Benton getting their first win of the season. We'll talk a bit about the Stormers as well, with Sean Everett putting on a much improved performance to hammer the Stormers and uh, prolong life as an Edinburgh coach, I reckon, for in another few weeks. But you'll need another result this weekend. Before we do that, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. It all started on Friday night, and Zebra, who a few weeks ago beat Ulster, were put to the sword over at the Scottsdale as the Glasgow Warriors, the current reigning champions. Uh, showed exactly why they are current reigning champions and uh, dispatched Sebra with little to no um, resistance, really, with a solid 33 points to 3 victory. Uh, Scarlett and Billy Carter, very, very interesting one. I mentioned that Carter were a potential team to watch this weekend if they were to get another result, for example, put themselves up quite high in that table, but having gone down to Scarlett's, have uh, definitely lost a bit of momentum uh, compared to others. Now, the Sharks, down in 14th place, going down to Benton, who hadn't won a game going into this last weekend. And the Sharks, if you're going to be really honest, were pretty awful. Uh, first time tackling the poor, um, and uh, not much of a sort of game plan that sort of looked, um, it, it looked very threatening. And a couple of sort of reasons about that. People talking about sort of some of the player fatigue, and I really have an issue with that. We can't be talking about player fatigue three weeks into a new UR season. If the players are tired, in inverted commas, it's completely down to poor man management by the Sharks management and coaching staff. And I think the reality is what happened is that they had a really poor start to the Curry Cup campaign. They brought in a lot of players who were sort of on their sort of rest period off-season, and uh, they then had a very tiring few weeks in trying to go extra time for example against the Bulls, a really sapping game against the Lions, and had to go immediately overseas. So... That is why there potentially is fatigue, but I think it's such a poor excuse because this is the thing, you know, you've got to manage your squad. And yes, I understand they're without their spring marks, but the side that they're putting out is still a good side, still a side that should be beating Benton, if you ask me. Um, you know, plenty of international players on that side. And you've got to, you've got to weigh these up, you know, as a union. You've got to sit there and look, what was the Curry Cup victory, for example, worth the slow start they're not going to have in the URC. And we're going to look at the table to see exactly, you know, what's happening over there. It's sitting down at 14. Similarly, you know, Edinburgh versus Stormers. Stormers just look very lackluster, to be honest. Uh, far too many mistakes. And uh, a lot for John Dobson to, to think about because it was just a Stormers side. I never really looked how they're going to get going. Again, you know, defensively, we're, we're very uh, like civ, to be honest, and just didn't pitch up. And that would be a big worry for John Dobson because, again, missing a lot of players, but still... A lot of quality in and around that side, and uh, they'll need to get their spring box back quite quickly and into the mix to try and salvage a few results before we go into that sort of month long break during that November international. Uh, we then saw a very, very good match over at Crow Park, a sold out the highest ever uh, attendance for a URC game. Leinster winning 26 points to 12, very typical Leinster fashion. They went out quickly, scored tries. Oh, it's never getting on the scoreboard as well. Munster, whilst they sort of really sort of fought to get back into the game, just couldn't find enough uh, to get. And themselves uh, anything from the game. Um, Bulls, then were looking very comfortable against Ospreys. They really remarked the class in the first half. Ospreys did come back towards the end and they had a bit of a scare for the Bulls, but in the end, they made a three wins out of three and they sit very comfortably in that sort of top four in the URC. We then saw um, Ulster Edge connect out, not a, uh, a, a, a game which was ever sort of clearly one sided, but a very important result for Ulster to uh, get themselves going. They've had, had a great start to things this season. And then, as I mentioned, the Lions, kind of thing in third place. Three wins from three. Yes, it is a dragon side they'd expect to beat. But, uh, again, going overseas, for example, we're seeing how difficult it can be for some of these teams to, to find those results. Let's have a look at the table, shall we? And uh, if you're a Lions supporter, well, things don't look better, do they? With a game in hand, currently sitting on third position behind just the Glasgow Warriors and Leinster, both who have played an extra game one more win for the Lions, for example, in that catch-up game would put them above Glasgow Warriors. So we could even be second. 
And the Bulls also three from three. Uh, so tied over their points difference for the Lions at the moment, getting them ahead of the Bulls. But uh, yeah, perfect starts for the South African teams. And I think they'll be targeting at least one more win. If they can come away from that three match tour with two wins and a loss, I think both those sides will be quite happy with their start. It would put them at uh, four wins, for example, out of five in the opening periods. And we're really looking at, for example, Glasgow Warriors, who are second, have already dropped a game. If you are going to lose games in the URC, it is a very tightly contested competition. The question is, how many wins can you notch up in between uh, you know, those losses? And, and you are going to probably have a bad streak as well. So if we then have to look at the bottom side of the table, we've got Stormers with just five points from their first three games. Sharks, uh, six points over there. Uh, one win for each of those sides. And uh, none of them really looking very convincing so far. They have had a three-week tour, which is all quite tough and grueling. They do return back to South Africa. So lots of work. It'll be interesting to see the types of teams we see this, for example, Yemen Etzebessi Eklisi back in the Sharks setup and back in training, for example. So they expect to welcome all their spring marks back and potentially get you know two, uh, one or two games in before that November international period, which starts in just a few weeks. So but, uh, a bit of a mountain to climb at the moment. Uh, you know, but, but Again, two results can change things. You're going to get two bonus point wins, for example, and after five games, Sharks will be sitting on 16 points, which will be the same as what Glasgow Warriors is sitting after four games. So it's... Not the end of the world. That's the main thing. It's a very long season, and you can't win the season in, in October. But if the Sharks and Stormers were to lose in another two games, for example, even in one, you know, and suddenly sit up to five games with one or two wins, they'll be very much bottom half of the table and would have a lot of work to do in the, uh, the forthcoming months to try and work their way back up this table to get past that magic line between eight and nine into the playoffs and into Champions Cup qualification. It is very merit-based now, so it's not about... Um, having a representative in the Champions Cup for every conference, for example, or Shield, as they're, they're calling it. It is about making the top eight. That gets you into Champions Cup rugby. That gets you into playoffs. So at the moment, the Lions, Bulls, very comfortably out there. But uh, as we know, things can change very, very quickly. Let me know what you thought about the performances down in the comments below. So please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.